Hi everyone, this is Dr. Paramjit and you're watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel and hope you're doing fine today. Today we are going to talk about sodium. We're going to cover the topics of low sodium in diet. So we are going to discuss what is the importance of sodium in your diet, in your body, from what are the main sources which you get sodium from, what will happen if sodium in your blood increases, if it decreases, why sometimes patients with kidney, heart, liver problems are recommended to take a low sodium diet. Is low sodium salt better than a common salt or not? And all these topics will be covered here. What are the side effects of having low sodium in your diet? What is hyponatremia, hypernatremia, increased sodium in diet? What happens when that happens? So all these things will be covered today. So stay tuned if you want to know about all these things. And don't forget to subscribe and share my channel. If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. So as you know guys, sodium is an element that is already present in your body and your body needs it for its normal functioning. Uh, table salt contains sodium and the body uses sodium to control blood pressure and blood volume. See, wherever sodium goes, water follows. So if sodium is coming inside your blood, water will come inside. If sodium goes out of blood, water goes out of blood. That's the idea. And your body also needs sodium for the muscles and nerves to work properly. So where do you get these sodium from? Your sodium is naturally present in most of the foods. Its most common forms is sodium chloride and it's also present in other forms like uh, you must have seen MSG, monosodium, glutamate, sodium nitrite, sodium uh, saturine, sodium bicarbonate called as a baking soda and sodium benzoate. So it's present in many food products including milk, beet, celery and even water contains sodium depends upon the source uh, how much amount of sodium it contains then uh, even uh, soy sauce onion salts garlic salts many of the food products actually contain sodium all of the processed meats contain a lot of sodium all of the fast foods which you get are generally very high in sodium so sodium can be taken from many sources in your diet so it's not just about table salt. So what happens if there is too much sodium in your body? What happens if sodium is less? So if there is very, if too much sodium is there, it can lead to high blood pressure. That is in some people. Remember that too much sodium. If it, if you're taking too much sodium, that does not mean you will definitely get high blood pressure because normally your kidneys are able to manage the level of sodium by excreting amount of water. If you're taking normally equal amount of water in your diet and high sodium then your kidneys can excrete water and sodium along with it and can manage the levels and you might not have blood pressure but in some people high sodium in diet will lead to high blood pressure and uh, it can definitely lead to increased volume of fluids in the blood and high blood volume can be a problem with especially patients with heart failure or liver cirrhosis or kidney failure. So if you have kidney, liver or heart failure problem, then high amount of fluid in the blood is a problem for you because it could be an overloading situation. So how much sodium can you actually take? So the recommendation in dietary sodium is basically in milligrams and healthy person, healthy adult can take around 2300 milligrams per day and if you have hypertension or have kidney, heart, liver uh, dysfunction, then you can take around 1500 milligrams per day. And what you need to know about it that table salt contains up to 40% of sodium. And there is no specific recommendations of sodium for children, infants or teenagers. So it's just about uh, all these people should actually eat a healthy lifestyle and it's a good idea to just avoid too much salt. Because too much salt can lead to hypertension and a problem and especially if it would be an overloading situation for your kidney, obviously your kidney has to work a lot. So now let's talk about low sodium situations. So if there is a low sodium situation inside your body, that means 
your blood contains less amount of sodium so what will your blood do because sodium is less the water will be the body will try to keep less water in the blood so where will the water go the water will go inside the cells if your body if your blood contains less sodium that means your blood will try to push out as much as fluid as it can so your kidneys will try and excrete more fluids more water and even the blood even the cells around the blood will take up water and swell all to just balance sodium and water levels in the blood now sodium is an electrolyte and it is required just like we have discussed for nerves muscles and other bodily functions but when the cells try to swell up to balance low sodium in the blood this can cause problem especially in the brain the brain cells are specially very sensitive to swelling and a little swelling can lead to a lot of symptoms so it's not just about the diet a lot of other situations can lead to a low sodium situation in the body including say you got diarrhea say you are taking diuretic medications for increasing urine output if you have heart failure kidney failure liver failure if you have uh, a lot of sweating if you have a lot of vomiting if you have burns somewhere like in a larger area of your body then you can lose sodium now let's see what will happen if there is less sodium in your body the first situation like we uh, discussed was that your brain cells are very sensitive to swelling and as the sodium goes down the cells become to swell and as the brain cells become to swell there can be confusions irritability restlessness fatigue headache loss of appetite muscle weakness body you, know, you can have nausea vomiting you can have convulsions so all these things can happen just because of low sodium in diet and they can actually vanish or go when as soon as your sodium levels are replenished how can we know so let's discuss a little bit about how can we know if your sodium levels in the blood are low or not so your doctors can actually ask for blood tests and urine tests so a comprehensive metabolic pro panel can be done including blood sodium levels sometimes urine osmolarity urine sodium and osmolarity of blood test can be done but a blood sodium level is quite sufficient to actually diagnose the situation now let's have a small peek about the treatment of course the actual cause of a problem must be first diagnosed and then treated low sodium if caused by just diet diet has to be changed if it is caused by other conditions like we already discussed that needs to be addressed then generalized treatment includes fluids iv fluids through the veins medicines which can relieve symptoms and then limiting the water intake obviously if sodium is low water intake should be low to balance now let's have a peek about the prognosis see outcome of low sodium depends upon the condition what is causing the problem see if low sodium that occurs in less than 48 hours which is an acute hyponatremia situation is more dangerous than if it develops over time when sodium levels falls over days or weeks it's called a chronic hyponatremia the brain cells have time to adjust and swelling may be minimal in a chronic situation but in acute acute situation it is dangerous sometimes it can lead to unconsciousness hallucinations coma and even brain herni herniation can happen because of swelling and obviously death can also happen in very severe cases so low sodium is not something to play around but if you have high blood pressure heart failure liver failure kidney failure then you need a low sodium diet then low sodium salts are good for you but if you are normal normal person does not need a low sodium salt low sodium salts contain lesser amount of sodium and because they have to put something to actually preserve the taste of it then they put potassium in it potassium is again again a electrolyte which if present in an imbalanced amount can cause problem so that's why if you need low sodium you should take low sodium or else no if you need a high potassium diet only when your doctor prescribes then you can take a low sodium salt or else no if one person in your house in your house is recommended to take low sodium salt that does not mean everyone should take the same 
So that's all about low sodium guys. If you have any questions about sodium or any other electrolyte, do ask us. If you have a question about any other health related topic, don't forget to comment and do let me know how you like my videos. If you want any other videos to be made, if you haven't subscribed already, then it's your job to do that. Just hit the bell icon as well as the subscription button so that you always get a notification of my next videos. Hope I'm helping you out here. So don't forget you help me out by sharing my videos. This is Dr. Paramjit signing off. Peace out.